hello hello friends i am ram lakshmanan so uh, before we get started i re read one interesting article i want to share what i read in that article it seems in your hand there is a lot of acupuncture pressure points and when you clap like this all those pressure points gets activated and when it gets activated it's really good for your blood circulation the person who is clapping is going to feel very relaxed it's good for his art so all throughout this session feel free to clap whenever you wanted to right <laughs> maybe you can start with one now oh, okay okay cool okay so uh, so you you, you can okay, feel free to clap i will feel i am getting encouraged right <laughs> okay so for, uh, before i get started i want to thank all the organizers martin dimitri mitya right they are doing a, such a selfless job to organize such a high quality conference thank you everyone okay okay so uh, friends people a lot of people may get surprised right there is a is there is a nine types of out of memory error right see actually there is nine planets are there including the sun and some cultures believe that where the position of those planets are can influence your mind body and thinking so i'm hoping after this talk you will get influenced on when you are going to troubleshoot out of memory error i think this talk may influence you okay so let's get started friends i want to start with this question does java process memory utilization go beyond xmx let's say you have set your applications uh, memory maximum heap size xmx as 6 gig or whatever the number is will your java application consume more than this xmx value how many of you say yes few hands are going up so very few probably less than 10 percentage of you are saying it it will it may go up right it will go up let's find the answer to that friends there are different jvm memory regions right the first region is called as a heap memory within this heap memory there is two two regions one is called as a young generation and other is called as the old generation as a developer let's say i write a uh, code let's say i'm creating a new object those objects say i say new car i'm creating a car object that object goes to this young generation and if it's going to be living for a longer period it gets promoted to this old generation and when you set xmx you are actually only setting the size of this young generation and old generation only after that there are few more regions let's see what those regions are after that heap memory there is a segment called as a native memory let's see what are the things there what are the regions there the first region in the native memory is called as a meta space so this is the region which stores your meta data definitions which are required to execute your program like say the class definitions so you write a class right those class definitions goes into this meta space and this is outside of your xmx okay and then where is the threads are stored the threads are stored see threads are very integral part to execute your application right where are the threads stored the threads are not st stored in this eng or old they are stored in a separate region called as a threads and they are outside of this xmx and then there is another region called as a code cache right friends as a developer the code that we write see, since the morning i'm here i'm listening maybe the ai is writing <laughs> right. so where that code is not the actual code that gets executed at the run time the jvm does a lot of hot spot compilations and it improves the code quality to make it run faster to execute faster that needs memory that memory is coming from this code cache region which is also outside of this xmx and then there is another region called as a direct buffer say suppose if you are going to use java native io that is java nio package libraries or if you are going to directly use the io operations they are going to be stored in this direct buffer region and in java the garbage collection is automatic right garbage collection is automatic so where is the to do that automatic garbage collection we need the garbage collector needs some memory where is that memory coming from that memory is coming from this gc region which is outside of the xmx 
and then there is another region called JNI in case if you are using native application like a C, C++ application, you are connecting directly from your Java application to, the, to those native applications, that needs memory. That is coming from this JNI. Typically, none of us are using JNI in today. right? And then I am categorizing one more region called as a miscellaneous because certain JVM vendors, they have their own uh, region to do some optimization, so they are keep, So I'm calling this a miscellaneous region. So friends, when you set XMX, you are actually only setting a portion of JVM's memory, but that is a primary portion. That is a predominant portion. We can easily say for most applications, the XMX accounts for 80 or 90 percentage, but remaining 10 or 20 percentage is coming from this native memory. So answer to the question, will your Java process, can it consume more than XMX? Answer is yes, right? <laughs> Good, you raised it, okay. So it's going to consume. So why I, am why I am talking about these regions? Because it is connected to what type of out of memory we are going to get, right? Let's, let's, keep, let's dive in. So what typically causes an out of memory error? Let me run a sample program to show you what causes an out of memory error. This is a very vanilla hypothetical example, but this is a typical case. Okay, see, um, is the, my font is visible for the folks at the back? Okay, I see thumbs up, good. Huh? Little bit bigger? Okay. Okay, look at this. This is the memory leak demo. Here I have an object called as an object one. So here I'm saying, I'm invoking the operation grow on this object one. Let's see what is this grow method does to the object one. The object one, internally, it has a class called as a map manager. And we are, this grow method is invoking the grow method on this map manager, right? Now let me go in here. So here, if you see this map manager, it has an ash map, right? It has an ash map. Look what's happening within this grow method. Here, it, it's going on an infinite while loop. We are saying while true. That means it's going on an infinite while loop. And here, let's see what's happening within this while loop. Here, I'm saying my map that is on this ash map. I'm saying key zero, and then I'm putting a very large string, large string zero, right? I'm adding it. And then here, I'm, whenever I do 1,000 records inserted, I'm just printing the count. And then now once it's coming back, I'm saying one second, saying key one, large string one. Key two, large string two. So what's happening is the hash map is going to keep on growing. And when hash map goes beyond what the memory can allocate, what, mem what the memory we have allocated, then we are going to get this out of memory error. Let me run this program. Okay, so I'm running it. See, it is saying inserted these many records. Okay, boom. Finally, now I got this classic Java lang out of memory error, right? I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it here. Okay, so now, friends, how will I know what type of out of memory error I'm getting? I told there is nine types of out of memory error. How will I know what type of out of memory error I'm getting? Answer is always it's printed in the out of memory error itself when we get. See, when we see that out of memory error, we stop looking after the colon. Going forward, whenever you get out of memory error, see what is after this colon space. Here, the type, what type of out of memory you are getting is going to be printed. Right? We typically we don't see. We only stop looking after before. We read only what is before the colon. Start reading from this session. See what is after the colon. Let's go back to this di example. After the colon, here I got Java Eep space. So this is the first type of out of memory error. So this is it's it's giving a clue what type of out of memory error am I getting? Okay. So now. What would cause this out-of-memory error? 
Java heap space. This is the first type of out of memory error. This out of this type of out of memory error happens when your young generation and old generation saturates. Right? I keep on building the objects. Like for this example, my hash map. I keep on adding my hash map. It kept on building. After a point when there is no, there is not sufficient memory, then there is not sufficient XMX. I'm going to get this out of memory error. Java heap space. Okay. Friends, when we get how to go about diagnosing this type of out of memory error? Friends, when we get this type of out of memory error, we can in fact we can forecast this type of out of memory error. Instead of reacting to it, we can even forecast it. How we can forecast it? We can forecast it by studying the garbage collection behavior of your application. Look at this. This is a garbage collection behavior of a very healthy application. Why I say very healthy application? You can see the request is coming, the memory is building up. Now, when this full garbage collection event ran, the memory dropped all the way to the bottom. Request is coming, the memory is building up, a full garbage collection event ran, and the memory is dropping. You see this beautiful sawtooth pattern going on. Friends, look at this. The, I put a line which is connecting all the bottom points wherever it's dropping. Look, it is that black dotted arrow. You see, this is going at a zero degrees. Right, this is a slope. It is going at a zero degrees. Now, let me show you this diagram. How does this look to you? This is an application which is suffering from an acute memory leak, which is suffering from a slow memory leak. It is not aggressive enough, but it is slowly it is leaking. Look what's going on. You can see the request is coming. The memory is building up. Now, when a full garbage collection went ran, the memory dropped. Initially, it dropped to kind of a kind of a 22 gig. Right, it's dropped to 22 gig. Look what's happening as time is progressing. Now when this red triangle, when this full garbage collection even ran, the memory didn't drop to this 22 gig. It's rather dropping to this 32 gig. Right? And if I put a line connecting this, all the bottom points, look at it. It's going at kind of a 12 degrees. This is a slope. It's going at 12 degrees. And friends, today the slope is basically a high school mathematical formula, which we all learned in our high school y is equal to mx plus b but today people are calling this as machine learning so all high school students are machine learning engineers now <laughs> okay so uh, keeping that aside look at it now what will happen if this application is continued to run this is what happens you can see this is an application which is suffering from a very serious problem it has suffered from a very serious memory leak. You can see memory is going up, down, up, down after a point. You can see the garbage collections keep on running, but the memory is not dropping at all. Friends, garbage collection, even when one red triangle, if it runs, a CPU is going to go to 99%, 100%, and it's going to drop. Because garbage collection is a heavy CPU intensive operation. And here you can see the garbage collection is keep on running, but the memory is not reclaiming at all. When there is a memory leak is happening in your application, your CPU utilization will be at a 9900%. If CPU utilization is at a 9900%, that means there is a very good chance you are having a suffering from a memory leak. Look at this. This is what is happening. Friends, we get out of memory error. JVM throws out of memory error only when I reach this ceiling limit. All our monitoring tools starts to generate alert only when we reach this ceiling limit. But several minutes ahead, Right? You can see the garbage collection pattern is ticking up. The garbage collection is running, but the memory is not reclaiming. It means several minutes ahead, by looking at the garbage collection behavior, we can forecast and we can tell you are going to have an out-of-memory error. You are going to have a memory problem. Right? Okay. Now, how to study this garbage collection behavior? Right? How to study this behavior? Friends, to study the garbage collection behavior, the best way is to enable the garbage collection logging in your JVM. Right? You can enable it by passing these arguments. If you're running till Java 8, this is what arguments you want to pass and give a file path. So the GC logs will be returned by the JVM itself. If it is Java 9, this is the argument you want to pass. Friends, the GC logging does not add any noticeable overhead to your application. Right? There is enough white papers. I, I will share it at the end of the talk. It does not have any noticeable overhead. So I would recommend, in fact, I have seen a lot of large-scale JVM deployments. There, they all have the G GC log enabled all the time. So have it enabled. 
So now you are going to have the GC log. But a GC log is a pretty cryptic and very tedious file. You cannot read it manually. So you may want to use some GC log analysis tool. So here is one tool called as a GC EC, right? <laughs> so you can uh, upload your GC log or it has APIs to monitor it real time as well to see what's going on. So let's, let me quickly show you a GC log. It is a very cryptic, unreadable file. But now, um, see this is uh, the GCEC, this tool is available in the cloud version and also on the on-prem as well. You can have it either ways. So, so now I'm going in. So you can just upload the GC log file or there are also REST APIs to monitor it at the real time. Now I'm uploading that GC log file, which is very unreadable, very cryptic file. Now when I do that, the tool analyzes it, and then it immediately tells what's going on. Okay, if it sees an error, it d detects, it says it's out of memory error, here are the recommendations to resolve it. It gives you also the recommendations to improve your GC performance, your JVM performance. Pass this argument, remove that argument, increase this value, give these things. And here you can see this pattern live. Look at this. This is what is repeatedly happening. One thing you want to look at is the reclaimed bytes. See, as GC is starting to run, it's not able to reclaim. The amount of bytes it's reclaiming, you can see it's starting to go down. And now here it's almost zero bytes. Keep on running, but the memory is not getting reclaimed. It means a classic memory leak, right, you're having. Okay. Now, once you have the, once you're confirmed, yes, I'm having a memory leak in my application. What is the next step? Next step is I want to capture the heap dump from my application. What is heap dump? Heap dump is basically a snapshot or kind of a photograph of your application memory. That snapshot is going to give me what are all the objects which is there in the memory, what are all its children, what are its grandchildren, what are the actual value, the raw data that you created is going to be visible there. And there are eight different options to capture heap dump. Like you can use like a JDK tools, it's like, like a J, JMAP kind of tools are available, or JCMD, you can use them to capture it. But friends, I want to share with you an open source script. This is an open source script called as a YC data script, right? So this script, you can just pass in your application process ID. When you pass the application process ID as an input, it's going to capture you a 360 degree data from your application stack, right? Which is going to include the heap dump as well and also the GC log and other information. See friends, whenever we are dealing with a performance problem, it is an unknown territory, right? Performance problem can happen because of any reason. But here, since I'm saying it is out of memory error, you're focusing, but generally what we get reported is, oh, production a server crashed. Oh, it became unresponsive. That's all we are going to see. So we want to take this 360 degree data because the best way to fight an unknown problem is to troubleshoot with all the data. So this script is going to give you all the data, which is going to contain the heap dump as well. Once you have the heap dump, right? Now next step is you want to analyze the heap dump. How to analyze the heap dump? So there are certain tools, like Eclipse Mat is one of the tool. Your J Profiler, J Visual VM, EPRO, these are some of the tools which is available for us to debug the out of memory errors. So for this demo, I'm going to be using this EPRO tool, but you're welcome to use any tool of your choice. So friends, <coughs> so how does this EPRO tool look like? This is the EPRO tool. You can install it locally, right? And here I can upload my heap dump. See, heap dump is typically tends to be a little bit large file. So it, it to upload and then analyze, it's going to take some few minutes, right? So since uh, I, I already have it done for you for this session, not, not to waste any time. Let me open that report. Once you upload it, you can just upload the file, and then you can see the result. The result is going to look like this. Here is the result. It has come. It's going to tell. Let me try to make it a little bit bigger. Here you see. Remember the program that what we ran? So this is the program what we had. We had that map manager. We had an ash map, which I was populating. See, now it is reporting this class, the map manager, is occupying 99.96% of memory. It's a problem. Investigate it. Friends, whenever there is a memory leak 
always, always look for the largest object section. There's multiple sections in the report, in any tool. Always look for the largest objects, because always the memory leak happens from the largest objects. Right? So look for the largest object. Here is the largest object. Here, it is reporting this map manager is occupying like a 99.96 percentage of memory. Right? So now I want to know what are the contents of this map manager, what goes into this object. Right? I want to see its children. To do that, what you do is click here and see what is the outgoing references. That is, what are the references going out from this object? What are its children? So now I'm clicking here. So now I can see this map manager internally contains an ash map. Even you can see the variable name, my map is getting printed here. Look at my variable name, what I have defined. It has a my map is being printed here. And now when I drill it down, the map has a table, internally a table. You can see this table has like a 1 million records. 1 million 81,000 records are here. Let me click on one of them. See, when I clicked here, I can see the actual value that I created. Like you can see the key, this is the key, and this is the value. So I can see the raw data. Now, okay, now I saw what is the object, what are the children, which is very good. But I want to know who is holding on to the reference of it. Who is keeping this object alive? So to do that, come back here, click on what is the incoming reference. That is, who, are, who, is, who is referencing me, who is keeping me alive in, the, in my memory. So I'm clicking here, incoming reference. When I do that, I can see oh, this is being map manager is held by object one. And this is being held by memory leak demo. So I can walk through who is keeping it alive. So I can see who is the parent who is keeping it alive. Equipped with this information, I will know where the leak is happening, who is holding on to it, and then I can go ahead and arrest the problem. Right? Okay. So now, let's uh, do a recap of what we discussed just now. So what causes this type of out-of-memory error, Java heap space? See, friends, this can happen because of two reasons. One is... It could be genuinely your application traffic might have gone high. Maybe last year you are processing like a 10 million transactions in a day. Maybe now you are processing like a 20 million transactions in a day. The transaction count has gone high. That could also cause this issue, right? That could be the first reason. Or the second reason is there is a memory leak due to a buggy code in our application, like this hash map which was keep on building up. So what is the solution to fix this? The solution to fix this is, First solution, fix the memory leak code, right? The second reason is, say, if it's happening because of the increase in the traffic volume, then try to increase your XMX. That should resolve the problem as well. So what are the artifacts that we need to troubleshoot this problem? We need the garbage collection log and then a heap dump. So what are the tools that we want to use? To analyze the GC logs, we want to use this GCEC. For to analyze the heap dump, you can use one of these tools, right? Whatever is of your preference, okay? Now, let's move on to the second type of out-of-memory error. GC overhead limit exceeded. Friends, this error also happens for the very same reason as the first one. That is, when your heap memory, when the when your young generation, old generation gets filled up, then, also, then you're going to get this. So, so even if I run the same program what I ran, few times I will get Java heap space. But few other times, I will get this GC overhead limit exceeded. So even when this type of out-of-memory error happens, don't worry. Just use the same methodology, whatever we discussed earlier. That is, look into the GC log, take the heap temp, and then analyze it. So this error happens interchangeably, right? So you don't have to worry about it. Now, the third type of out-of-memory error is requested array size exceeds the VM limit, right? What is this? How, how we can trigger this one, right? So look at this. Here is a code. Look what I am doing. Here I am creating an array. I am saying array int max value, which is two to the power of thirty-two minus one. Which I don't have. If I don't have this much XMX allocated, and then when I am going to run this program, so I am trying to create a very large array size. Then what is uh, what what my XMX size is? So now when I am going to run it. See, I get this Java lang out of memory error. Requested array size exceeded, exceeds the VM limit. Typically, no developer does like this. Right? 
But sometimes, uh, so, uh, what you may try to initialize an array list uh, and tr uh, try to initialize an array based on the number of records you're getting back from the database. Maybe, you're, say, you're getting like a million records, 10 million records, and you try to initialize. At that point, there's not sufficient memory. You will get into this error. But one good news is when you get this type of out of memory error, it's going to be printed in the stack trace itself. It's going to print in the stack trace itself where the error is happening. Here I can see in the stack trace. Oh, this is the class, this is the method, and this is the line where it is happening. You don't need to go into the complicated thing of looking at the GC log or heap terms. You don't need to do it. Just look into the stack trace, and then you can nail down this problem. Okay. So now, here is a quick recap of how to go about this out of memory error requested array size exceeds the VM limit. This type of out of memory error happens when the allocated array size is larger than your heap size. What is the solution to fix it? Maybe see whether you are creating an array which is genuinely need such a big size. If not, fix it. Or let's say if you, if you need that kind of a large array, then try to increase the XMX, right? And how do you look into that? Look into the application log or the STD error if you are routing it to the error stream, right? You don't need any tools to analyze this type of error. Okay. Friends, the fourth type of out of memory error is Java lang out of memory error metaspace. This type of out of memory error happens when your metaspace region gets saturated. So what is stored in the metaspace region? The class definitions, right? Say I write a class, the class definitions, they go in there. So when, when, you, when, you, when you try to load a lot of third-party jar files, third-party frameworks, or you are using creating classes dynamically, like say if you're using Groovy, that's a scripting language which creates uh, classes dynamically at runtime, so they are going to build up a lot of class definitions. And then the metaspace is going to be saturated, and you're going to get, get this type of out-of-memory error. When this type of out-of-memory error happens, your GC behavior looks very interesting. Look at this. This is how your GC behavior is going to look. See, always the, f the repeated full garbage collection happens when you reach the ceiling limit, right? When you reach the ceiling limit, max limit, you're going to see. Whereas here, it is starting to happen when even when you're at the bottom. Do you know why? Because the metaspace region, go back, the metaspace region is a small region. It is not the full region. The primary region is this young and old. So the metaspace region, even if that gets filled up, the GCs keep on trying to keep on run. So when it tr tries to keep on running, you see them happening here. But since a small region, even when it's at the when it when it didn't reach the peak limit, you are going to see this. So when GCs keep on running, but when it, when it's at the very bottom, then it's a very clear indication you are having a problem with your metaspace. So now let's look at a demo of what triggers this metaspace. Uh, Java lang out of memory metaspace. Let's look into this. Okay, here is a code. Look what I'm doing. Here, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a new class. Here I'm having a while loop, infinite while loop. I'm saying while true. And then here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a new class ev every time on a, every iteration. Look, I'm saying a new class, metaspace object, a random ID. And then I'm saying make a class. This typically happens, say, suppose, if you're using a groovy library or you're trying to load a lot of third-party frameworks, you're trying to load a lot of third-party libraries, and the metaspace is not sufficiently allocated, this problem will happen. Right? So now I'm trying to create a lot of objects, a lot of class definitions into memory. I'm just creating a classes. Now let me run it. OK. So now when I'm running, see, it, uh, I'm able to create like uh, these many thousands of class classes. And after a point, when the metaspace gets saturated, you see I'm getting this out of memory error metaspace. Friends, typically when we get out of memory error, what is our typical response? We go ahead and increase XMX, correct? When you increase XMX, will this problem be addressed? No, right? Yes, it, it will not be addressed because it's like XMX is going to increase your young generation, old generation. But the metaspace is suffering from a problem. It is like if my hand is having injury, I'm treating my leg, right? <laughs> Something like that. Okay. So now, 
how do we know okay i got this error how do we know what is the class definition which is leaking what what classes are getting loaded into my memory i want to know that to do that what you want to do friends is if you are happen to be running on java 8 or below version pass launch your java application with this flag verbose class if you are running on java 9 and above pass this argument this is going to be printing what all the classes that is getting loaded into the memory gets printed so what are the classes you are loading is going to be printed so now let me run this program with this verbose class uh, argument passed now i am running this very same program with that argument passed look at this it is saying it is loading see it, it let me stop it is saying it is loading this class meta space object this one so if you happen to load if if some groovy script is loading a lot of class definitions or let's say a third party library is misbehaving or loading a lot of third party it, it prints so now we will know okay this is the classes which is occupying meta space region and see whether it is genuinely you need it or if not eliminate that uh, library from your if you don't need it or increase your meta space size to address this problem so now what is our, here is a quick recap what causes this out of memory error meta space is because i am trying to load a lot of dynamic classes or i am trying to load a lot of third party libraries i will get into this issue if that is the case fix your memory leak in the meta space happening there or if not increase your meta space size this is how you will enable the logging to see what is getting loaded and these are the tools that you want to use for analyzing it okay so now the next one java lang out of memory error perm gen space this if is anyone running on java 7 or below version no one then you don't have to worry about it it's not going to happen for you <laughs> <laughs> right see this happens uh, the meta the meta the class definitions before java 8 that is from all the way from 1 to 7 they were loaded in this perm gen space but starting from java 8 the perm gen was uh, removed and was replaced with meta space right so when you try to load a lot of class definitions in the java 7 or below version you are going to run into this problem how do you go about diagnosing it it's a very same approach what you did for meta space right you want to use the same approach here okay so now the sixth type of out of memory error unable to create new native threads and this is a very interesting type of problem which is very different from other types this is happens when your application starts to create lot of threads when application start a lot of when it start to create a lot of threads you are going to get into this type of out of memory error when you get this type of out of memory error will capturing heap dump is going to help us no because heap dump is a photograph of your memory of objects what are the objects which is there it's not going to tell me what are the threads which is being created to do that to diagnose this type of out of memory error you want to capture a thread dump the thread dump basically tells what are the threads which is running in the jvm and what code path they are executing it contains those information you want to use the thread dump so there are nine different options to capture thread dump like you can use like a jstack tool or jcmd which is part of jdk or you can use this same this open source script you can see it is capturing a thread dump as well right so now friends what i will do i want to show you a real problem this problem happened in a very major financial institution in us and this is the real case study of the thread dump which was captured when the problem was happening at their end so let's look at that thread dump so for analyzing a thread dump there are you can look into the thread thread dump uh, tools like here the fast thread is one of the tool or you can use the text editors but it's going to be a little bit tedious to do with the text editors so here now when i upload it here this is the live thread dump the actual thread dump which caused the problem right so here it prints all the summary of what are the threads which were created like you can see this application had like a was having like a 1859 threads typically it has only like a 300 or a 400 threads right it had like a 4 or 5x more number of threads have been created and these are the states it, in which it is see the tool it does analyzes from various perspectives 
And here, one of the perspective here, what it does is, it tries to group the threads which have the identical stack trace and presents it count. See, friends, so it uses a pattern called RSI pattern. That is a repetitive strain injury. See, what will happen if I keep my hand in the wrong position, keep on typing? I get a repetitive strain injury, RSI injury, right? I get a carpool tunnel syndrome. Similarly, whenever there is any problem in your application, multiple threads will start to execute the same code path. To start execute the same code path. And that's what is happening here. This application is having like a 1,859 threads. Out of the 1,859 threads, 1,700 threads, that is more than 95% of the threads, are having the identical stack trace. And this is that stack trace. Let's look at them. This is that stack trace. And friend, this is, I told this is a middleware platform. Since a middleware platform of a bank, it connects with various system of records, multiple system of records. And one of the primary system of record is an Oracle rack cluster. The Oracle, the database vendor, they told to this uh, financial institution, allow financial institution, enable this flag, ONS, that is online notification service, ONS flag to be true on your JDBC driver. When you set it to true, what's going to happen is, whenever in the Oracle rack cluster, if any node goes down, immediately very next, tra tra very next transaction is going to be routed to the other active nodes. It's going to improve your application's availability, enable the flag. The financial industry enabled it, but the contrary happened to what the vendor told. <laughs> what happened was, whenever any backend call was made, a new thread was created. A new thread was created and got never terminated. So for every call, a new thread was getting spawned, and the thread count started to grow, and then this application confronted with this out of memory error, unable to create new native threads. But now by looking at it, well, they know, okay, this is originating from this Oracle package. Then they took it to the vendor, and the vendor acknowledged, yes, this is a bug in the code, and then they fixed a new, they gave a new patch, and then the problem went away. Okay. So, so far, okay, let, here is a quick recap of this out of memory error, unable to create new native threads. This happens when the threads is leaking. So what are the potential solutions to fix this problem? Friends, first thing is, take a thread dump and see whether there is a thread leak is happening, if so, fix it, right? And friends, this problem may happen even if there is no thread leak is happening. This is very interesting. Every kernel, they have a limit, they set a number of threads it can, at each Java, each process can create. 512, 256, they may set. And when you go beyond that limit, then automatically this error gets thrown. Even though your application may legitimately need more than 500 threads, but since that kernel limit is there, you will get this error. If that is the case, you want to increase the kernel limit. Right? So here are some of the other uh, solutions which is there. And the very important thing is to troubleshoot out of memory error, unable to create new, new native thread. You want to use a thread dump, not the heap dump to analyze the problem. That is a key takeaway. And the tools, what you want to use is, you want to use a fast thread or some kind of a text editor to troubleshoot the problem. Okay? And then the seventh type of out of memory error is called as a direct buffer memory. Java Lang out of memory error, direct buffer memory. This happens when the direct buffer region cannot be saturated, and they can, can no longer create, this will happen. And this is the place where the Java NIO objects are stored. And if you're directly doing the file IO operations, they are being stored here, right? So let me show you a quick uh, demo of how this is going to happen. Okay, and this is the code, a sample code. I'm using a byte buffer, which is part of the native IO, NIO package. I'm just trying to allocate a very large size a byte buffer, right? So when I try to run this program, see, I'm getting out of memory error, direct buffer memory error. One very good thing is when this happens, it's going to print the stack trace itself, where it is happening, right? It's, it shows, okay, this is a stack trace where I'm allocating. So we can go ahead and fix the problem right there. So look into the stack trace when these type of errors happen. Okay. So when this type of out of memory error happens, it can happen because when there's an increase in the memory consumption on this region, 
and how to what are the solutions the solution is fix the code the memory leak code or if not if you see it's a legitimate use increase your max direct memory size so this is the parameter which sets the size of the direct buffer region you can increase it and also friends there are a lot of optimizations have been made in java 17 release on this region so if you, there is a possibility for you to go to java 17 that is also an another possibility for you to go right what are the artifacts that we need to troubleshoot just look into the app log or the std error so because stack trace is going to indicate where the problem is happening you don't need any special tools okay so now the eighth type of out of memory error is called as a kill process or sacrifice child it is a little bit harsh right <laughs> right see this type of out of memory happens sometimes kernel can kill your java process completely kernel can terminate your jvm it it, it will happen <laughs> kernel when there is a lack of ram capacity when there is not enough ram and it is getting true in more in the container world when there is lack of ram capacity it may think a java process is asking more memory it's going to kill you it's going to terminate the java process boom the process is gone completely and when this happens the sad story is it's not going to be reported anywhere but for one place that place is kernel logs who looks into kernel logs we don't look into kernel logs but there is a command called dmessage dmessage when you issue this command it's going to print the kernel logs so the script captures for you so in the so here is that um, it's not going to be visible for you here it prints out of memory kill the process is happening here right it, it gets printed here so friends here is a real case study but in interest of time i will, I will not be able to go into much detail but let me show uh, this is a real problem happened in a real uh, enterprise so this enterprise su was suffering from http 502 error that is intermittently it was getting 502 so what is 502 error means it means it did not respond from the back end server that's what it means and it was happening in the elastic beanstack service of aws elastic beanstack is a containerization service so here is a very high level architecture of this elastic beanstack look at this nothing fancy there is a load balancer at the front it's going to distribute the traffic to ec2 instance each ec2 instance has an nginx web server and an apache tomcat application server right this is how it is and intermittently the, the users were getting this 502 errors 502 error bad, bad gateway errors so what was happening was when looking in the kernel uh, logs it was printing okay it was happening but what actually was happening behind the scene was this tomcat process was getting killed by the kernel the kernel was killing the tomcat process when the kernel kills look at what's happening when the request come the nginx is going to send to apache tomcat the tomcat got killed so now the user is going to get 502 error but why then it should continuously get 502 error right why it's getting intermittently 502 error because the kernel was killing it but since it's a containerization service the orchestrator the container orchestrator was restarting the tomcat process so the container orchestrator was restarting the tomcat process when it's up it was responding the kernel was killing so application was going up and down up and down the kernel was killing the, or the orchestrator was bringing it up <laughs> So it's a pretty tricky problem. So you need to have equipped with enough data to troubleshoot it. Okay. So, so now the last type of out of memory error is called as a reason stack trace with native method. So this happens when your native memory region saturates, right? When you, this only happens if you're going if your Java process is connecting natively with a C or a C++ application that's when it's going to happen typically most of us don't use JNI so you don't have to worry about it but when this happens right you want to be using like the operating system native tools like a dtrace pmap pstack to look into what is the problem happening in that native process to see what is the issue going on there right friends I have a good news for you the good news is my talk is ending with this <laughs> right <laughs> okay. um, so 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 this deck will be published here in this site blog.epro.io and uh, in case uh, tomorrow I'm, i'll be talking a little bit more into a thread dump analysis deep dive workshop 
in case if you're not very bored with me you are welcome to join me tomorrow right okay thank you friends mm -hmm.